<laughs> Good morning, everybody, and welcome to The Balancing Act. We're having fun as usual. I'm Julie Moran. And I'm Olga Villaverde. Lots on the agenda today, Julie. There really is, from fighting back against a rare blood cancer to new ways of feeding our global family while saving the planet. I love, love that. this one. Yes. Yeah. Plus, the college experience, what you need to know before sending Brace your yourself. child off to school. I'm oh. not prepared. Mine is going in three years. Oh, my, oh gosh. my gosh. Oh, our tissues. <laughs> the balancing act, stay with us. We'll pull it together. All starts right now. We want to start the show with a Be The Change story on empowerment, specifically empowering and inspiring women through something that's vital to all of us, food. Our guest walks the walk and talks the talk. She's a South African adventurer, entrepreneur, environmentalist, and lifelong social activist. Wow. So honored to meet Sarah Collins this morning. Good morning. How are you, Olga? I'm so happy you're here. Thank you so much for joining us on The Balancing Act. It's so fabulous to be here. Thank you. And your story, your, everything about you is so fabulous. I want to talk about, I've never been to South Africa. You know, you I, haven't. I want to go one day, but you know, you, you grew up in South Africa in the 70s. Tell me what that was like and, and how that started maybe a mission for you. You know, growing up in South Africa in the 70s was a really tough, tough um, place to grow up. There was stark inequality. And for me, growing up in rural South Africa, I was always absolutely astounded that my friends slept around fires and huts and I slept in Egyptian cotton linen. So from a very young age, I had a burning desire to change the inequality and the status quo of children and women. Sometimes people say there was a turning point in my life. What was yours, Sarah, where you said, okay, now I gotta do something, and this is my time. You know, Olga, I spent my whole life looking for that. I thought I was gonna drive down a motorway and my mission would be on, you know, on a billboard. But it actually happened in 2008, and I had been um, working with women. I was working in communities, 700 communities across Africa, <sighs> looking at how to economically empower a grandmother, a grandmother who was looking after AIDS orphans, and um, her children's children. And everything I did was not changing her economic status. And I wanted to find something that was really gonna change the game. In April 2008, We'd had rolling blackouts in South Africa. We'd wow. run out of electricity oh for days on end. And I suddenly remembered my grandmother, and she used to cook with a box and two cushions. Heat retention cooking. Really? The oldest cooking technology in the world. And I thought, but if Gran was using it back in the 70s on the farm, mm -hmm. why can't we bring it into the 21st century? And hence, the wonder bag the wonder bag. And this was the pivotal moment in my life when I knew that my life would never be the same. And I'm not sure if my viewers know what this is. This is amazing. Tell us what it is, how it works, and the fact that your grandma inspired you is amazing. You know, Olga, when I developed it, I developed it for an African problem, deforestation, eight hours over a fire. But I never realized the relevance in an American kitchen. And that's what's so exciting. Really, it's very simple. Mm -hmm. It's a revolutionary, non-electric, portable slow cooker. It's great. <laughs> so you literally, and I'm going to show you, you bring your food to the boil. You put the pot inside the bag. Oh my gosh. You close the bag and it continues to cook for eight to 12 hours. So while you are transporting it, wherever you're going, let's say me, where I am constantly going to competitions with my girls, I'm there for 12 hours sometimes. I could take something warm, carry it with me, and it continues to cook. Olga, <laughs> you're a dance mum. I am. Do you want to feed your children fast food on the road? All the time do we do it, it's the wrong thing to do. Absolutely. My I really feel my purpose in life is to empower mothers, to empower women, to be able to be 
give their children and be leaders to their children to show them how to live differently, to be the role models for our children that we want to see the change happen with. It's not us who's going to change the world, it's your generation of children. So for me, if you can empower children with the right food, cooking the right way, being part of a solution. And that's why we, when I launched in America, I launched you buy a bag on Amazon and one gets donated to my foundation. Oh, that's awesome. So once you purchase one, one also gets... Absolutely. And I know you brought all this food and you made it in the Wonder Bag. Absolutely. No more mushy food. Breakfast oatmeal, soup, squash, chicken masala. Oh. And this is a turkey kale casserole, oh which we will take off the stove, put it into the Wonder Bag. Literally. Literally. You would prepare it exactly as you <gasps> always would. Boil it for 10 minutes, put it in the bag, turn that off. And I have got some for you to taste, which I prepared before. And it continues to cook in there. Absolutely. And you can put it into your RV and take it on your dance class. I love to cook and I love you. Oh my God. Is it good? It's awesome. Mm. Okay, I want to get one of these. I know my mom is going to want one. Where do we go for more information? Oh, this is so good. Wonderbagworld.com. Thank you for coming. Thank you for everything you do. Promise me you'll come back. With pleasure. Thank you so much. God bless you. And I will see you in South Africa. Fabulous. That is on my list of things to do. All right. Once again, wonderbagworld.com. And of course, you can visit our website, thebalancingact.com. What an excellent way to help feed our global family. Great innovation. And coming up, Getting schooled on enhancing your college education. We'll be right back. I recall getting ready to go off to college for the first time. It really was a great time in my life. So now it's your child's time. And the sooner you and your child start planning and prepping, the better. Our guests will share some great advice on that process and what can be done to enhance their college experience once they get there. Meet returning guest Dr. Emily Hunt, a professor at West Texas A&M University in Canyon, Texas. And we also have some current students joining us, Libby Strickland and Desiree Chambers. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having us. Doctor, let me start with you. So when do most people start the process of, you know, getting ready for college? That's a great question. Uh, personally, I don't think that you can start that process too young. I know in my house we're already talking to our, our little kids about college I've and what they might be. I've been they were someday. born. You're going to go. You have to absolutely, go. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So um, from a university perspective, we typically um, encourage students to start their sophomore year in high school mm -hmm. because, you know, this is a huge decision and um, you need to take the time. You need to do your research, visit campuses. Um, every campus has a very different feel and culture and I think that, um, that you know, spending time on campus gives you a feel for that. So I definitely think you need from sophomore year to know by the time you're a senior, you know, what, what your tentative plan is going to be. And what do universities look for in potential students? From a university perspective, mm -hmm. we're, we're looking for students who have demonstrated um, character and work ethic and perseverance. And so that manifests itself in a variety of ways. So we do look at um, extracurricular activities, Academics, of course, are, are number one. Right. Um, we but doing something for, outside of that in high school, for Absolutely. Community service, outreach. Um, you know, we want um, students who are well-rounded and who we know from the get-go, you know, these kids can do this. They can, they can make it through. And then they're, they're also going to contribute um, to the community, to the university while, while they're in school. Because books are great. Getting good grades is great. But also being out there and putting it all together is really what you're looking for absolutely. in somebody. And let's talk about two students. Now, I was reading here, Libby, Libby, yeah. right? You are a senior biology major. That's what I was. Wow. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and Desiree, you're a junior in mass communications and broadcasting. Yes. You want to take my job? <laughs> I'd Possibly? love it. Okay. What were you involved in, let's say, in high school, Libby, when you were looking towards college? Well, outside of the classroom, most of my time was spent in athletics because I was um, played volleyball and ran track. So um, athletics was a big part of my life and uh, took up a lot of my time. But the good thing about athletics is it teaches you a lot of things that you need to know um, in college, such as like time management skills, yes. um, discipline, and also coping with losses and failure, I think is a good um, thing in college. You know, you're not going to win every all battle. The time. You're not going to win every battle. So 
um, those things really help me. And my girls dance a lot and we travel around the country. We win, we lose, and I think all those things build character. Would you agree and tell me what you did? Um, I was involved in like yearbook club and um, a military club. So my family's in the military. I was raised in, in a military family. And so what that taught me was to just be adaptable and know how to accept change and that change is okay. And if you go far from home, it's okay because you are, you're always able to be social and you just know how to just be fun and relaxed all the time. And doctor, what I love here is we've got, you know, athletics, we've got clubs. Again, all of these experience really helping to build character and students for a future university. Absolutely. Um, our, our goal as a university is not just education um, in the academic sense, but educating contributing citizens, right? We want them to graduate and, and be a member of society. And um, so, so extracurricular and athletics, and, and this is all part of the development of the whole student. Now, I know when you first start college, and even if it's your junior year, see, it's, it's tough, let's be honest, and you're juggling all that. So you're studying a lot, you're taking your credits. Libby, what are you doing now at the university? Um, I'm on the track team. Oh. So I run track, and I'm also involved in the orientation at WT, and so I'm a peer leader. I kind of mentor uh, freshmen and help them with the transition into college. Um, I'm also on the Intercollegiate Athletics Council, and I'm the student representative, so that's pretty cool. And you're happy at West Texas A&M? Yes, I love it, I really do. How about you? Um, I'm a president ambassador for the, for the president's office, and then I'm also a tour guide for WT, which we show people around, and I'm in Rogers Lead WT, which is a leadership program, and so it's really fun to be involved in different organizations around campus. And you know, the bottom line here is two girls who are going to be motivated, experienced, and hopefully, you know, hit the world and be Absol ready. <laughs> Absolutely. These, these two girls are definitely models for success. West Texas A&M. Okay, so... Are you going to be a broadcaster? Yes. Is that what you want? I want to be a college football sports analyst. Oh my gosh, I love it. And doctor? Originally that was the plan. That's what I was supposed <laughs> to be. <laughs> but things have changed since then. Well, so. you've got so much time. Enjoy life. Do your best and change careers if you have to. <laughs> I've changed my career four times already. Doctor, thank you so much for your time. And for our viewers out there who'd like information on West Texas A&M, where do they go? WTAMU.edu. Thank you so much for your time. Good luck to you, and maybe you can come on by one day and uh, help us out here on the Balancing Act. We'd love to have you. All right, and for more information on how to enhance your college experience, who knows, you might even take my job. Visit WTAMU.edu or visit our website, thebalancingact.com. It's no secret college costs can be astronomical and student debt continues to rise. Now, if you're lucky, you or your child will get a scholarship, which will help cover all or some of the cost. That's good. Otherwise, you're on your own, pretty much. So how do you go about saving for college? Well, get ready for Saving for College Boot Camp. Our guest is certified financial planner, Sean Moore, who's with Smart College Funding. Good morning. Good morning, thank you for having me. I'm glad you're here because you know, I'm getting closer to this. My daughter's starting high school and I'm already thinking college. Yes. So here's my question, Sean. What is the average student loan debt today? For last year's graduating class, it was $35,000 per student. Wow, that's pretty hefty. It's very hefty. As a country, we owe $1.2 trillion in student loans. It's a big problem. And it's a, it's a burden if you think about it. When a child finishes, a student for that matter, they wanna go on their own and then they have this debt. So what are things that people can do to kind of offset that? Well, when you're starting as a young family, the best thing you can do is to save. To start <laughs> saving now, and the earlier you start, the better, you are, the better you'll be. And that sounds good, but what about the family that says, well, I'm living paycheck to paycheck, every penny counts, you know? Every penny does count. Even if it's $5 or $10 a month that you can start with, the earlier you start, the better off you'll be. That's true. And what if you start a little later, and how do you do that then with saving for college? When we're in what we call late stage planning, rather than saving for college, I'd rather you save on college. And to do that, you need to understand which schools offer the best bang for the buck. You need to understand that a typical four-year degree takes most students five years or longer today. So if you find the schools that are graduating their kids on time, graduating kids in four years, then you can save tens of thousands of dollars. Perfect. And what about for the adult, let's say, that says, I want to go back, uh, but I've got a, a job, but I really want to finish or I want to continue? Right. Especially if you have a job, the first place to start is to look at your employer. A lot of employers offer a tuition reimbursement plan. They do. Or they'll offer a, a raise when you complete your degree. Um, the other thing you can look to is turn to your accountant and ask about tax credits. The federal government offers tremendous credits for people going to college, and you can reduce your college costs by $2,500 a year or more. 
And if you have that debt, or let's say some debt, mm -hmm. no matter what, you're getting an education and it helps in the future in terms of maybe making more money too. Oh, absolutely. The numbers are $24,000 per year is the difference that someone with a college degree earns over someone with a high school diploma. So it's a <laughs> tremendous, tremendous value over the lifetime of, an, of a person. That translates to a lot, of more, a lot more money per month. A lot more money per month, a lot more money over your lifetime. It's a million and a half dollars more the average college graduate earns rather than a high school graduate. Any more tips to share in general? This whole process can be pretty overwhelming. I'd recommend reaching out to a, a professional, ideally a certified financial planner that understands the intricacies of both saving for college and then how to spend on college. Because at the end of the day, it can be done and it does make a difference. It can be done and every little bit helps. What's the website that we can tell our viewers in case they want to go back to college or they're getting ready to send their kids off? It's smartforcollege.com, and that's smart number four college.com. Thank you very much. Appreciate Thank you it, for Sean. having me. And of course, if you'd like more tips on saving for college, visit smartforcollege.com or our website, thebalancingact.com. Welcome to my kitchen. This is Quick Bites with me, Chef Ralph Pagano. Now let me tell you something. Ramen noodles are not just for college students anymore because today I'm going to show you how to go gourmet. I'll be preparing a refreshing summer salad with a soba twist. And the star of this recipe is Marishan Yakisoba noodles. They are fantastic. The main recipe I'm preparing is a soba noodle salad with cucumber and mango. It's perfectly refreshing for a summer lunch, yet hearty enough for a dinner. All right, let me tell you what you're going to do. Yakisoba noodles in Japan, they usually refers to pan-fried noodles with seasoning and meat, right? And that's what we're going to be doing right here. I've got a pan. I've got it hot right now. What do I got? Rice wine vinegar and sugar. And I'm going to add those together, and I'm going to make this kind of Asian-flavored uh, sweet and sour mix. The whole time I'm doing this, I pop the yakisoba noodles in the microwave. A little bit of water, seasoning pack, press go. It goes in. I'm going to add it to the pot. To this, I'm going to add a little bit of uh, Fresno pepper. I got some fresh garlic that I'm going to introduce to this vinegar sugar mix that's going on. A little bit of sesame oil goes into my bowl. Fresh lime zest, squeeze a lime, and it's all in there. Add the vinegar sugar mix with the fresh garlic. Toss in some peanuts, fresh cucumbers. Some great mango. No yakisoba salad would be complete without a little bit of fresh mint and fresh basil. Right here, you pick it from your garden, you throw it inside, you pick it from your grocer's garden, just as good, not as free. Mix it together with a little bit of mint. Toss it all together. Boom, done, it's delicious. Now this couldn't be any easier. You can serve it hot, you can serve it cold. Either way, you, your friends, and your family are gonna dig it. Wanna know more about Marishan noodle bowls and other great Marishan products like Yakisoba? Log on to thebalancingact.com. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. Share your favorite ramen noodle recipe with us. We wanna see it. Remember, this has been a quick bite. But chew slowly. You know, I feel like I've been schooled on so many fronts this morning. <laughs> Absolutely. By the way, uh, do you like my bracelet ring? I do. It looks familiar. I think you got one. I did. From many, your mommy. Many years ago, but it's not the same one. I like this color. Oh, see? She wants my ring now. Uh, okay. Happy birthday. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, a great friend. Yeah, I am. <laughs> well, that's our show for today, but head to our Facebook page and our website. We've got lots more there. Also, be sure to tell us about your college experiences. We really would love to hear from you. We look so forward to hearing about your stories. Nothing naughty, please. Don't send us naughty <laughs> stories. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. Find your balance. So long. Okay, so give it to me. Yeah, okay, take it off. Okay.